Hi, this is John Lindeball from John Lindeball Tutoring, and this is AP U.S. History Video Lesson 2, European Exploration and Conquest. European Exploration and Conquest. A number of factors led to the expansion of European powers into the New World. The conquest of the New World also brought about change in the Old World, that is, Europe. One such change was increased competition among European powers to build empires. Why European empires? Well, think God, gold, and glory, the three G's. God, Catholics and Protestant denominations wished to find new converts for their religions. Natives of the New World were ideal, in quotes, heathens or pagans, whatever you would like to call people who were not Christians, to convert and save for Christianity. Why European empires continued? Gold. It could be actual gold, like this here. See Cortez, for example, who forced the natives to bring back gold upon pain of mutilation or death, or any possible source of wealth. So it could be tobacco from the New World, could be coffee, could be molasses, timber, cotton, hemp, etc. Glory. Power is attractive. Controlling a large part of the world is a goal for its own sake, including making it easy to obtain material things. Prestige, basically being respected, being glamorous, and, or at least fear from others, those are also important to countries as well as individuals. So we have a game here for the glory, for, for the PC, which talks about conquering empires and shows that, and then greater glory. So definitely conquest involves glory of a kind. The Crusades revived trade. Religious wars, reclaim the Holy Land, such as the Crusades, sent Europeans to the Middle East, leading to renewed trade between Europe and Asia. So here we see a painting of the Crusaders heading off to the Middle East and Asia. And the Crusades led to things being brought back from the Middle East to Europe, which led to a demand for foreign goods from Asia, the Middle East, etc. Remember Columbus? Probably the first story you learned in kindergarten. He was trying to find a sea route to India to avoid the Italian city-states. The Italian city-states were in the Mediterranean, he had to pass through, and of course, if you look at, oops, this map here, you can see you had to kind of go through here if you were going by land, or if you're sailing through the Mediterranean, you probably still ended up having to either dock or trade, etc. in the Italian city-states, and I'm sure just like a lot of major cities today and major countries, they put some pretty high taxes on things like that. You know, you just had to give people money and goods and things just to make things happen smoothly. You know, little bribes, little grift. Anyway, so he wanted to find a sea route to India that was probably better than going around the Horn here, around the Cape of Good Hope, which means you have to go all the way around Africa to go here. So he was thinking, huh, I can just go around this way. So here's actually where he ended up. Instead of India, he ended up kind of in the Caribbean. So, Black Death. What's the Black Death got to do with colonialism? Well, the Black Death, also known as the bubonic plague, was a pandemic spread by fleas, such as this guy here, that were on rats, and they killed about 30 to 60 percent of the European population. The tragedy led to opportunity. There was more land, since there were fewer people. There was more land per person. People were more willing and able to take risks. The feudal system was undermined. It's really hard to enforce the system of law and order if your troops slash police are dropping dead from the plague. So, feudalism was kind of falling apart. The Renaissance was taking place. The Renaissance literally means rebirth. Intellectual curiosity came back into favor after having been discouraged and suppressed during the Middle Ages and Dark Ages. The church was not particularly fond of people learning new things or certainly learning anything that didn't agree with their teachings, also known as their dogma that you were supposed to accept without thinking. So, exploration, such as with this ship here, 
mapping and sharing of this knowledge through universities and books. Gutenberg's printing press, a picture of which is here, was invented in the 1440s. So universities and books existed, well, universities obviously existed beforehand, but instead of hand copied manuscripts, you had things that could be copied using machines such as printing presses. So there were books that could tell people what lay in the new world, or what at least they thought lay in the new world, and that led to a greater demand for exploration. Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther's nailing the 95 Theses to a church door led to the Reformation, which created Pro Protestantism. Eh, trip up on a word sometime. Anyway, it created Protestantism. Basically, Protestants invented themselves through Martin Luther, and that created, for example, the Lutheran Church, which is named after him. John Calvin, his ideas were used by the Puritans, the idea of the elect, that if you succeeded in this world, it would mean that you would go to heaven when you die. So if you succeeded at your calling, your career, you, that meant you were on your way to heaven. Calvin and Luther both criticized decadence in the Catholic Church, which was really the church before the Protestants invented themselves. Luther was particularly annoyed with the selling of indulgences, which were essentially a paid license to sin, if you will. So um, if you wanted to go commit a sin, you could pay some money to the church, and then you had a license to go and commit that sin. It's kind of like an old George Carlin routine where... Well, everything I steal, I'm going to put into into the poor box at church. When I get older, you know, well, Father, I'm really going to do it. You know, anyway, those are things that didn't make very much sense to Martin Luther and John Calvin for pretty good reasons. And the Church of England and the Puritans. Henry VIII over here. See the little joke here? V-I-I-I-8. Hater is going to hate. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway. Henry VIII broke with the Catholic Church for political reasons, perhaps mostly because the church would not grant him a divorce. He responded by establishing his own church, the Church of England, in, which is in the U.S. is known as the Episcopalians, basically just taking the English branches of the Catholic Church and turning that into the Church of England. Puritans believe the Church of England reform, the Protestant Reformation in England, was insufficient, and they followed Calvinist thinking, that is the thoughts of John Calvin. There's a reason that Puritans were sent to the New World. Basically, the Puritans didn't really agree with mainstream Church of England thought. The Puritans did actually take over the British government for a while under Oliver Cromwell, but only for a while. And when they went out of power, the Puritans were strongly encouraged to go to the New World, and many of them did. And there's an old joke. Why did America get the Puritans, and why did Australia get the criminals? Australia had first choice. Ha ha ha. Any of those of you who are offended, I'm sorry, it's just a joke. Anyway, Counter-Reformation. The Catholic Counter-Reformation was a resurgence in spirituality in the church. The Jesuits, also known as the Society of Jesus, it was an organization and is an organization dedicated to spreading Catholicism throughout the world, and it was created as a result. They're very intellectual, they're very good at deep thinking, so they're very well known for that. The effect of exploration and conquest on Europe. There was new wealth. There were precious metals such as silver and gold that were mined out of the New World and that stimulated the European economy. More money helped capitalism replace feudalism. And so, new crops and livestock from the New World helped the European population, you know, increase. Basically, remember the Black Death that had decimated, you know, take, had taken about 30 to 60 percent of the population. So the new crops and livestock helped people get food and reproduce. How the Columbian Exchange affected Europe? Well, we had, as we said, new crops and livestock. So you had turkeys, corn, tomatoes, potatoes. Potatoes, obviously a big deal in Irish. There would be the Irish potato famine later that would lead to a lot of Irish immigration to um, the United States later on. Anyway, this was new food for the peasants and lower classes. Corn, potatoes, etc., pretty easy to grow. Turkeys, etc., those were new food for everyone. And even for the well-fed, it meant, hey, less boring food. Hey, look at this new food from the New World. Tobacco was a hugely popular import from the New World, along with cocoa. The economic effect of the conquest. We have inflation. 
Well, the problem is with all the goods brought to Europe by explorers and conquerors, you might think, hey, the average European's life must have really improved, right? No. And the reason is, is because increased money, gold, silver, when you print more money um, with a fiat economy such as ours, where it's not backed by silver and gold, you just print more money, it causes inflation. When you have more silver or gold in an economy that is actually backed by silver and gold, or the money actually is made out of silver or gold, again, more money means inflation, because if there's more money for the same goods, supply and demand, again, it just means that the same goods are going to cost more money. Royals in Spain raised taxes about five times in the 1500s to fund the military for their empire. I mean, they were basically coercing, forcing, enslaving Native Americans. They were bringing slaves from Africa to the New World. None of that's going to happen without a pretty strong army because you're going to have to force everybody to basically let you take advantage of them and force you to do work, you know, force them to do work. They're not going to just say, oh, okay, oh, you Spanish guys, you want us to go and work on your plantation for free until we die? Yeah, yeah, we're cool with that. No, of course not. They're just going to say, uh, no thanks, unless they are definitely at, literally at gunpoint or the point of a sword. So... Spain also had to borrow money from other countries for this purpose because they were spending money faster than it was coming in. So the interest must be paid with tax money. The whole thing depressed the economy. Does that remind you of any country you know? Anyway, the average Spaniard had a decreased standard of living until the 19th century. Countries that borrow a lot of money and spend on their military uh, to a ridiculous degree usually regret it. Mm technological advances. Navigation became much better. The compass, the astrolabe, the quadrant, and hourglass all helped with navigation. They allowed sailors to map their way, determine speed, find location, you know, the lat latitude and longitude. So the new maps were called Portulanos, presumably after Portugal, where a lot of these things were developed and printed. And the common ships were sturdy Portuguese caravels, such as this one up here on top. Social and legal change from the conquest. The joint stock company, the forerunner of today's corporations, they were developed in the 1500s and were formed for trade or other purposes, and the investor's liability for losses was limited just to the money they invested, which is basically how corporations work today. You invest $100 in a corporation's stock, and the corporation dies, goes belly up. You're only out your $100 if someone sues the corporation for a debt, they can't come after your house because you invested in the corporation or anything else you own. You just say, oh, that's too bad. Well, I'm already at my $100. Good luck to you. So the risk is spread among a large group, which makes the risk manageable. Again, like today's corporations, or you can think insurance. Everybody pays a little bit of money for their car insurance. So the unfortunate guy who gets into a car accident can have his losses paid for because everybody paid into the insurance. And corporations, as you see here, we got a little angel and devil thing. This is a pretty good documentary about corporations. Can get up to some pretty sketchy things because it is, the responsibility is diffused. Nobody's really going to lose everything. So sometimes corporations can get up to things that they shouldn't. And just like back then, it happens today. Contact me. Facebook, Instagram, email, phone, Facebook. You can come to www.facebook.com, Linabal Tutoring, that's forward slash, my last name, tutoring, all one word. Instagram, www.instagram.com, forward slash, John, dot, Linabal, dot, tutoring. My phone number, my cell phone is 415-623-4251. My email is john at johnlinabal.com, and my website is www.johnlinabal.com or johnlinabaltutoring.com. Either one takes you to the same website. I also have a locals.com site called testpreparation.locals.com. If you want to mail me, I'm at John Linabal Tutoring, 1859 Powell Street, number 109, San Francisco, California, 94133. Did you find this video useful? Please like it and subscribe to my channel. Neither action costs you anything. You'll be alerted about my new videos. Why do I care? Well, it's simple. YouTube doesn't let me share any ad revenue unless I have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours. That's 240,000 minutes of view time in a year. While many people are watching these, I don't have 400,000, not 400,000, 4,000 hours of watch time. 
And right now I don't have a thousand subscribers. I think I'm at about 867, so pretty close. But hey, you can help me get to a thousand by subscribing. For the same reasons, you are not only welcome, but encouraged to share links to this video, put it in playlists, etc. I'm always happy to read and respond to constructive criticism or suggestions for new videos. I'd appreciate your input. I reserve the right to delete comments from and block those who specialize in destructive criticism. You know, trolls. Or things that are off topic. You know, spammers, disturb people. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, night, whatever time it is there. All right, talk to you later.